Okay. Thank God for last night's rest this morning, rise. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Grace is always giving me what I don't deserve and mercy. It's not giving me what I do deserve, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. How are everybody doing? Good. 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 All right. I'm Dirk. That's Katina. Katina, yeah. and that's Dash. Dash. All right? And together we call the minds of men. All right? We have different um, flavors, different styles, but we're all ambassadors of recovery. Everybody hear that? Okay, we don't know everything. I don't want to know everything, right? Ambassadors, all right? We used to be um, gatekeepers for foolishness. <laughs> but today, we all about living today. Everybody hear that? I've been on drugs for 20 years. I've been clean for 15 years, but all I got is what? Today, today. right? So um, tonight, we're going to talk about resilient people. Everybody hear that? But first, we're going to take a look at the what? The cloud of what? Trauma. The cloud of trauma. PTSDs is in the cloud. Death of loved ones is in the cloud. Childhood pain, atrocities is in the cloud. Mental illness is in the clouds. Abuse is in the clouds. Abandonment issues is in the cloud. Rejection is in the cloud. Or what? Trauma. Everybody hear that? So it all interwines and it all works together because we're going to be resilient through dealing with what? Our trauma. Everybody understand that? Which, because if we don't deal with this, we run to what? The Matrix. And the Matrix is what? Fantasy Island. Because I don't want to deal with what? Reality. Everybody know what I'm talking about? So you got some people who are always in somebody else's business. You know why? Because they're afraid of what business? Their own. Their own business, right? So they become program pop tarts. All right? Always in somebody else's business because they're afraid of their own business. Y'all ready to have fun? Yeah. yeah. All right. Katina, you want to say something before we get started? Yes, hi. Um, my name is Katina, and um, thank you for allowing me to just be here, um, just, to men just to do mentorship and also um, sharing about our recovery. Uh, one of the things is um, I thank God for um, just waking up today. I thank God for the ability to just come out and start the day. I thank God for um, just being here in the room and talking to each person here. I thank God for Derek, and I thank God for Dash. Dash. Dash, Dash. I thank God for just the, um, is that your your group manager, right? The, the person in the back? Jared. 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 I, yeah. think, I thank God for him, <laughs> no. too, as well. Um, yeah, he stepped out. One of the things, back is Jared. Oh, Jared, okay. One of the things I thank God for is not Jared. being in the addiction <laughs> of alcohol. Mm-hmm. I thank God for that deliverance. Mm -hmm. I thank God for building me with resiliency. Uh, when Derek speak about the clouds, um, he's speaking about every last thing I done went through. Mm -hmm. um, the rejection, the mental illness, the death, um, the childhood. Um, pain, pain, atrocities. Yes. Yeah, and the abuse. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I was learning within it and the resiliency is how to identify those things and move forward and identify that um, you woke up that day, there's no reason for you to be influenced by peer pressure to want to pick up a bottle. I thank God for that, that, that strength and I thank God for that opportunity to just um, know that um, I don't have to turn around and use the bottle to cover up and walk through the fantasy island because I would walk through fantasy island. I would float all day. I would float in the clouds and I definitely would float on top of the water with <laughs> fantasy island and especially drinking. Mm -hmm. And um, that area in drinking, it had taught me how to forgive. It taught me in areas where the ability to adjust with all kinds of situations after I stopped <laughs> drinking. I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm not going to. Okay. All right. We're going we gonna to flow. All right. We're going to okay. flow. All right. Okay. And Dad, don't be quiet. All right. I'm not. Hey, Sister Mika, y'all. Let's give it to Sister Mika. Hi, Mika. All right. God bless. You right, you right, I gave her a shout out because I, I love people who care about people. That's rare. Everybody hear that? Yes. And when you find people like that, we got to hold on to them, encourage them, motivate them, for real. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And because because sometimes, because sometimes, because I know I know about that. You know, I'm not saying she's a, um, had codependency issues or people pleasers, mm -hmm. but we care and we love people. You find what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we would not be here if we didn't what? Care or love people. All right? So for those who are just coming in, I'm Derek. 
Yeah, that's Katrina. Up. That's Dash. Well, how you doing? We talking about. Hey, how you doing? We talking about resilient people. All right. <laughs> number one. Number one. Resilient people have the ability to adjust to all kinds of situations. Resilient people have the ability to adjust to all kinds of situations. Everybody hear that? Yeah. One situation might be going home to what? Hell. Pain. And pain. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. And knowing that what? That I love my mother. My mother needs my attendance, but my mother is toxic to me and my relationship. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Um, or, or my cousins, or my nephews, or my nieces. And they juggling perks and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I have to what? Adjust to that situation and try to look for what? Another place to stay. Because they will get me dirty before I get them clean. Anybody hear that? So if I'm resilient, listen, I don't, I'm always praying for options, right? To what? To be in, to put my life in a better position than being in the position of what? Failure. 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 Right, failure. All right? Come on. Um, my name is Dash. Um, hey, Dash. Um... I met Derek in recovery, and uh, and me and Derek want to become best friends. Uh huh. And uh, I enjoy being with him. So a lot of times he asked me to come out, to come, uh, come out with him to talk to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, like myself. Uh, I'm the sailor without me. I'm from West Philadelphia, born and raised. Um, uh, well, for my my story was like you know from doing drugs and stuff like that. It's basically it messed up my majority of my life, and uh, like last, uh, oh, look like a little bit more than like, oh, last year, from my usage of drugs, um, uh, I was smoking uh, angel dust. I went with my father's house and I collapsed. Um, uh, I woke up in the hospital. Well, I was in the hospital for like over like a month and a half. I had a uh, tube going down my throat to my lungs to help me breathe. So, you know, basically I was fighting for, I was fighting for life. And, uh, you know, and the doctors had diagnosed me and told my family that I wouldn't make it through the night. That was what man said, but God had something different. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and when I called home, I, you know, I had two down my throat, I couldn't barely talk. So, you know, and I was like just whispering. I had to talk to my sister. And she was so amazed and, and you know, like, but I know the power of God, I know what God can do. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of times God has saved me and brought me out of situations that nobody else could bring me out of. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm thankful for that. Yes, sir. And I'm glad I met Derek. I'm glad I'm able to come in and share my story with other people. Mm -hmm. That I encourage them there is hope and that you can make it, man, because that's what I was the worst of the worst is out there, trust me. I like Bonnie and Clyde together. <laughs> <laughs> Freddy Cougar and Jason. <laughs> huh? I was a bad dude. Trust me. Trust me. But today I'm grateful. I've always been a nice person, but drugs and alcohol change to a monster. Mm -hmm. You rob, you steal, you lie, you kill. Mm -hmm. and you don't care who you hurt. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. I want to get high. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad I don't do those things no more. So now I just take my energy and time like, you know, like to speak positive and share things with all the people. To help people, man, so they won't continue on that path of destruction mm -hmm. or do things that continue to hurt themselves because it's a better way of living. You know, and I'm grateful. And I'm glad I can share those things with y'all. Thank you. Very good. I'm going to send me a clean. About five months, two weeks. Hey, all right. All right. And I'm thankful. Yeah. And I'm thankful. Praise God. Good job. Stay here. Yes. And number one, have yes. the ability to what? Adjust to all kinds of situations. We're talking about resilient people. So when negativ negativity comes, I find a way to be what? Positive. Yeah, yeah. Everybody understand that? That's right. Yeah. If, and men, if she leaves us, everybody hear that? Don't get high. That's right. We don't get high. Everybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Don't get high. If she leaves us, it's not no murder suicide. Everybody hear that? Yes, sir. Let her go. Everybody hear that? You want you know ladies, that. there you go. Ladies, if he leave you, don't go crazy. Don't be like those women on light time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, she's gonna leave me look. She was leaving Cameron Pope in a U-Haul truck. Taking every damn thing. He bought nothing behind. I put everything in her leg, see? And the money, but I didn't want to use it then. So she came up, truck took everything. So when she leaving, I'm holding on to her leg like this. Like you ever see a chain with a cannonball? Yeah. I'm holding her leg tight. She's dragging me on the floor. But well, she left my ass too. You she, know what? You told me she's gonna leave me. You know I what? Ain't leaving. Yeah. Till I found out when she pulled <laughs> me that damn truck and took every damn thing I own, and they put me out mm. in the rain, mm. pouring down raining in Hot the rain. Damn. Yeah. yeah. What place was it? 
Huh? Who name was on it the was, list? It was really mine. Okay. But I also would love, blinded with love. Uh huh. Clouding my mind. Uh huh. All you see that butt, then what? <laughs> Joe. And uh, the dog, she loved it. And, and that really hurt it though. Mm -hmm. Did she take the dog? Huh? Did she take the dog? I never had, I didn't have a dog then. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was the dog. <laughs> but I, I never knew, I never knew, I was good to women though. You know, man, I don't go bad to but. You know, as life goes on, man, you will learn. See, life will teach you one way or another. Yeah. You're going to learn willingly or unwillingly. Yeah, right here, that? The best way to learn is willingly. willingly. Very good. Because pain hurts. That's Trust right. And you, I know. And, and what I also know, too, that women leave way before I know they're gone. <laughs> and you do? Yeah. But see, because but see, I wasn't listening to her. But you Everybody, find out when she's gone. That's right. When she pulled up that U-Haul truck and was taking anything out, went out that damn thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Right. Reality, get in. Set in. Without a doubt. And, and and see, what my situation was is that mentally she was gone. I didn't know it. Spiritually she was gone. I didn't know it. Psychologically she out of here. I did not know it. All because her behind was still there, I thought she was still there. But mom and because that? Yeah. And when you worship people, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. When you let people worship you. That's dangerous because humans by nature are fickle. We vacillate from wanting you to can't stand in you, mm. yeah. wanting you to hating you. Anybody understand that? Yeah. And if you worship somebody and they decide to change their mind about you, about me, a relationship becomes a hostage ship. Anybody yeah. understand that? Yeah. And it's hard to be flexible on what? When your heart has been broken. Amen. Because you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping people. And that's dangerous. Anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care if you're the, you gave them your last name. Listen, don't worship them. You gave them babies, don't worship them. Listen, you gave them a place to stay. Listen, don't worship them. Right. Worship your high power. Worship, worship the creator who made the creation. Anybody understand yeah. that? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's real. All right, for real. Yeah, that's that, real. I've been there before. I've been there. Your hand uh, in the back. Uh, um, for real. Mm -hmm. Man, it does. Got to the point where yes, said, mm -hmm. we always used to say love each other, but don't like each other. Ah, everybody hear that? Everybody hear that? Love each other, but what? Don't like each other. Okay, I don't. Know. Yeah. All right. Okay. That they love. If they got oh, yeah. if, I, if, I, if I truly love you, I just like you, period. Uh, okay, but, but you know, it's like 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 my ex-wife. I love her, but I don't like what she did. You know what I'm saying? She was abusive, right? Her son got murdered. That's pain. Her son father used to beat her up from sun up to sun down. When he told her he loved her, he still beat her. Mm. That's pain. Every man she dated cheated on her. Pain. Her mother tried to abort her with a hanger. Pain. Every man she dated, cheated on her. That's pain. And I had low self-esteem. I got tired of masturbation. I got tired of imagination. I wanted fornication. Mm. <laughs> and I got married out of what? Obligation. And I stayed longer past the expiration date. I knew it was over. Mm. Everybody hear that? Like, like he said, after the but, now Whoa. what? So I understand what my brother said. You can love them but not like them. Because I did not like what she was doing. They said, never hate the sinner. Hate the sin that's housed in the sinner. Anybody hear that? Yeah. And sometimes that's hard to do. And my man right here pissed me off. I got to still love him in spite of what he's what? Doing. Take Anybody you. understand that? Because right. I don't beat him with no, no hanger or no gun we or no that. bat or none of that or we no brick. <laughs> I listen, if he if he listen, if he's jealous, I gotta bring him love. That's the water to put up the fire. Spiritual water. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Right. Resilient people don't make excuses. They pray for solutions for their situation. And number one, they come out and they flexible. Because it's not them, it's the high power that's leading them. Everybody gets that? Yeah. Number two, resilient people keep the negative from having such a powerful impact. By finding something positive to focus on. That's big right there. Who keep their mind on the situation and you catch anxiety? Everybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. If we keep our mind on the problem, that's what can happen. If my mind is on the it problem. Continue to grow. Now you, you heard what he said? Continue they, to grow. Y'all hear that? Like cancer. 
Ah, very good. He said it would continue to grow. Uh, 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 my, my, my kids are angry at me. I stole from my wife. And listen, I lost my good job and my car broke down. And my mind is on the what? The negative. I went to the doctor. They said they see lumps on my breasts or cancers are erupting. And listen, my back, I got a slip disc and I might have lupus. And or listen, I might have um what they say, your bad feet, athlete's foot, whatever the madness is going on. I got bills that's up to the ceiling and I don't have a job. Or no opportunities to pay bills. That's negative. But if my mind stays on that, I can slip into what? Depression mm -hmm. and anxiety. And I guess what? And Jesus is out of the way. I'm not thinking about God. I'm not thinking about Buddha. I'm not thinking about Allah. I'm not thinking about what? What, what what's the, 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 the Torah? What, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. I'm not thinking about. Yeah, none of that. No. Spirituality is out the window because my mind is focused on what? My problem. Negativity. Very good. Everybody understand it? So keep your, our minds on what? The high power and not the problem. Everybody understand that? Easy said than what? Done. Who take meds? Okay. Right. <laughs> 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 hey, maybe they take meds? Come on, what you say, son? Come on. Oh, wait a minute. What you say? What you say? I'm dead? The medicine lets you up even more. Why you say that, son? Because when they put it in it. Ah. Okay, let's 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 tread lightly, because when you talk about meds, sometimes you just like talking about people's mothers, all right? Because <laughs> meds is what. But listen, wait a minute. Because meds is what. It's it's sensitive. Some people need it. Right. We're talking to you. We're talking to the people who don't take meds, but still, but they think what they're dealing with, their problems. They think they need to take what a pill for their problem to make them feel better. Now we're ad addressing you. If Katina works for Glaxico Smith and Klein. Dash is what? He's the therapist. And I'm the what? The client. I'm depressed. I'm miserable. My grandmother died. And I come into my therapist. He don't care about me. He got a conversation for what? Glaxico Smith and Klein said we have a new pill for depression. Mm. You understand that? We gonna pay you this much to give it up. <laughs> right. Damn. Right. So, so listen. So I'm crying my heart out. He barely listened. Look, Derek, stop crying. We have a pill for you to kill your, your pain. Mm -hmm. I take that pill, and all pills have side effects. I was going to say that. Yes. No More than benefits. <laughs> you watch so, 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 so if I take the pill, right, <laughs> it might slow my mind down so I don't think about the death of my grandmother, but I, my penis won't wake up. <laughs> side effects. <laughs> you know, side effects. You hear what I'm saying? So, so now, that, yeah, now that I gotta go to the bathroom more than regular, right? It's the side effects because I don't give a damn who you are. You can't concoct no pill and no laboratory to make me feel better about the death of my grandmother. Oh, I think I did. That takes time. That takes prayer. Right. That takes what? Uh, 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 understanding that we are born to die. Yeah, it is. Not being selfish. Because some of us want to hold on uh, to them so tight that when they leave, we listen, we go crazy. Ooh. Everybody hear that? Mm. So yeah. some pills, are not, we, we shouldn't take them. All we need to do is talk. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Honest. Yeah. I'm talking, he's listening. Yeah. I'm talking, he's listening. He's talking, I'm listening. And I'm getting what? Better. But the dude want to take the shortcut. He become Dr. Kevorkian. <laughs> yeah. I got a question. Yeah. You yourself, you yourself, you know, yeah. How many of y'all having side effects about the medication you're taking now? Okay. Um, how many of y'all ever explain to the doctor that's not the way you came in? You come and walk in this right. way, then you go and they change your meds. <laughs> Yeah. You had the right. You had the. I know. You had the right because um, with my story, my son died about. My son died in May. He, my son. My son got killed in May. And about three weeks later, everybody in my household became depressed. I didn't think I was depressed. I didn't think I was depressed. Uh, my mother couldn't handle it the most because she's the one that, not the blamer, that caused a lot of friction for why he wasn't in the house with us. All right, and once um, me and her got in it, she 302 me. And I was in a hospital for 14 days trying to figure out how to get out. And the whole process, I'm, re I'm vegan. I'm very vegan. 
Mm. I went in there, they gave me some meds, and I explained to them when I got up the next day how I felt. I was slurring at the mouth. Wow. Um, sometimes I was like very slow. And you know in your mind you're not that way. Mm. All right. Now, if you have a special dietary need, you can talk to the uh, nurse and the doctor mm -hmm. and your therapist. This is not how I was acting when I first got in here. Mm -hmm. Is there any other kind of medication I can take? If you're vegan or you have a special diet or you need some health issues, you let them know because those mm -hmm. meds are affecting your health issue as well. Mm -hmm. What they done with me, they had changed my meds and I told them I ain't had no problem sleeping. They, they always gave me meds that go to sleep. They said, you need to go to sleep. I said, no, I don't, because I sleep well. You ain't even got to tell me how to go to sleep. I said, the way I work and what I do all day, yeah. that's enough for me to lay down and go to sleep, close my eyes and wake up and mm -hmm. thank God for it too. Mm -hmm. So you can explain to them that you don't like taking the sleep meds. Mm -hmm. They will take them out. You have a choice to say no. Mm -hmm. You do have a choice to say no which meds you want because you're a patient and a client here. You're patient and a client here. Don't let them take authority over what you're supposed to put in your, to your body because after you leave out of here, you are responsible for what you need to keep up afterwards. Mm -hmm. So the way they're giving you the meds is the way you are able to handle yourself once you get into the house, mm -hmm. once you get into wherever you're living in. And one of the things that um, when I explained <coughs> to them that I, I'm a vegan and I needed protein, they started giving me the things I truly needed. I needed vitamins. Mm -hmm. They started giving me vitamins. They, they, they cut half of the pill down mm -hmm. of what they were giving me. Sometimes we need things to be help us with cognitive thoughts. And I'm going to tell you something. I was in denial that my thoughts weren't very clear when it was time to execute something, mm -hmm. something very important. So is that a point where, why I gave you all this, the reason why I gave you all those pins and pads it's very important that you go, you write down everything. Everything that's what's in this room, everything that Derek is saying, this gentleman is saying here, and also what I'm saying. And also write down the measure taking and the side effects so when you get into the room, you have your book with you and you can go over everything that you wrote and explain to the doctor, because the doctor's supposed to write down everything that you say, explain to the nurse, the nurse will listen to what you're saying, and if she's not helping you, you have a right to complain. All right, and also explain to the therapist that's doing groups with you. It's very important that you do this because it will help you be successful once you come out of the room, come out of this facility here. Mm -hmm. And help you be good food and be help you stay resilient. Everybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Self-advocating, very good. Because in Kirk Bride, West Philadelphia, one girl used to smoke crack and they tried to put on methadone. One girl told us Saturday. that paper. Till the Saturday, she said, listen, one of the doctors told her, he said, listen, I'm not in the job of bringing you down off your doses. My job is to take you to the methadone moon. Mm. <laughs> so we're going to leave it right there, all right? Because we listen, we want to start no uproar. I mean, it's like, yo, Derek, don't you come back here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number three, self-care keeps themselves in good physical and emotional state. Resilient people deal with self-care and keep themselves in good physical and emotional state. Who exercise? Who run in place? Sit-ups, push-ups, is that important? Squats, Very important. right, good, to extract, right? Exactly, is that important? Yeah. How about eating right, is that important? Yeah. Yeah. Very good, who about cucumber water and lemons? Okay, that's good. They don't serve it here. They don't serve it? Well, you no. know, okay, I'm you just talking about. You can ask for it. <laughs> okay. I asked, I said I'm vegetarian, and I asked for everything that that's a right. vegetarian eats, and they oh, have to honor it. You're a client here, and they're getting paid for you to be here, so they got to You know what they get vegetarians here? Salad. Yeah. That was good for you, too. Yeah, Salad, but it's it's iceberg lettuce. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask for some. That's like eating bread. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm going to tell you, Akalisis. How you doing? I got, um, Take it back. Tomorrow, well, today's 28 days. Hey, All right, resilience. That's what we're talking about, being resilient. We bounce back. Right. Everybody hear that? We're flexible. All right? We don't let nothing bad well, hold us down. We keep it moving. Number four, resilient people keep in touch with family and friends. Anybody? That was challenging. Right. Yeah. Now, let's just check this out real quick. Dash, that phone, can that be a hot box, a stress box? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that? Yeah. yeah. 
Who know when you listen before you go grab the phone, your spirit is up. Right. And you're feeling good. Right and you're feeling liberated. And, and, and you get on the phone and dial seven digits of the wrong person. And want to kill everybody in the world. Am I not talking about yeah. situation? Yeah. Yes. Come on. A friend of mine, we didn't call right together. Uh huh. And uh, he called home one day. He married to a girl for quite some time. He was my walker. He walked together the other day. And uh, he called me. And another man answered the phone. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That crushed his whole spirit. Anybody hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. He never was the same. So I had to watch him every day because I thought he was going to kill himself. Uh-huh. Because that's how depressed and messed up he was in his head. Because mm-hmm. yeah, he really yeah. loved that woman. Mm-hmm. Yes. See, when you get so wrapped up in things, right, you mm-hmm. can't get unwrapped. Mm-hmm. Or get to the point where you be wrapped up <laughs> in a rap. <laughs> and it'll be a rap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but my name Red, my boy's name Red, though, but, uh, He's doing well. Yeah. He's doing well, man. You know, like, you know, talking to a person, man, and being by their side means a lot. You know, that give people support. Mm-hmm. People need that. Go food, Dads. Come on, brother. Yeah, my name is Cedric, and I'm in Haiti. How you doing, Cedric? Hey. Love can be a seriously, seriously dangerous Ooh. emotion mm-hmm. if you don't know how to handle it. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know. They say the same thing make you laugh can make you cry. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, real talk, you know, especially in this recovery process, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, like I, I, I was just crying because I had a problem with rejection. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the small things like I'm saying, whoa, I said like, yo, uh, where am I at? Mm-hmm. You mean who's telling me no? You know, but I have to accept, you know, what's in front of me, you know, and I have to um, take, uh, re-examine myself, who is an addict, you understand what I mean, uh, because I'm coming from the streets, I'm coming from the street, and I'm coming from the snake pits, where you ain't gonna tell me no, but, uh, you know, I have to humble myself here, you know, and I have to really do some self-examination. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one of our counselors just gave me a book mm-hmm. to to uh, start to journal. Everybody hear that? Journal's good. Start journaling. Right. Yeah, because this thing is serious right now. That's right. I got about another 14 days to decide which way my life is going to go. Mm-hmm. You know, I can sit up here and take these motherfucking little, um, you know, nips and up to take me up if I want to. By the time I come down, okay. they're going to be shuffling me to the door with my bags and I'm not going to know what's going on. Hmm. I don't want to go here. This is not where I want to go. But this ain't about where you want to go. We didn't tell you when you came in. Get on top of your game right now. You better. I'm clear with that. How much time you got clean? Wow. 17 days. Hey, all right. Yeah. All good. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Good food. All right. Stay in touch with what? Family and what? Friends. Yeah. That right here, that. Okay? Some family members are more dangerous than strangers. Some family members love junky discount prices. <laughs> junky discount prices. Get Dirk. He'll paint your house for fifty dollars without a ladder. Right. Mm. That good? <laughs> <laughs> Cut your grass for ten dollars, yeah, right? right? And they love it. What yeah. programs I come from? When a dude is an electrician and he's dope sick, they will give him a gay shot right. because he can work for the program. They made that. And the person who was doing that, they knew better. And it was clients of his. And would give them um, gay shots to come out of the gate so they can what? Work for the program. Mm-hmm. Cheap labor. Mm-hmm. When we get high, we disrespect ourselves. So it give everybody else to what? A Follow man, suit. Anybody hear that? Yeah. Real. Family and friends sometimes are more dangerous than strangers. Anybody hear that? Mm-hmm. That's real. Friends. Mm-hmm. TD Jack says three type of friends you have. Number one, constituents. Number two, comrades. Last one, the most powerful one, is confidants. The confidants will let you know when your breath stink. Right. The confidants will laugh when you laugh. They will cry when you cry. Right. They won't sugarcoat your mess. That's confidants. We have few, very few, and so many of them. Comrades are against what we are against, the disease of addiction. Constituents are for what we for, recovery. So never tell a comrade when you should tell what? A confidant. Know who you're dealing with. Eagles don't hang with chickens. 
Families and friends. <laughs> Resilient people, all right? Very good, very important. Mm -hmm. How about the next one, y'all? Have a sense of being in control. Resilient people have a sense of being in control. <clears throat> What's that about, Dash? Having a sense of being in control. Control the situation. Okay, all right. Um, or even trying to control people. You ever been there before? Yes, I have. All right. Or manipulate them. Okay. Or manipulate the situation from my advantage. Okay. I'm going to get them. They don't know. <laughs> I always set it all up. <laughs> and, went, and went through with it, too. Okay. But Let's talk about relapse. Who relapsed and got control of yourself? I did. Anybody know about Philadelphia? Anybody from Philadelphia in here? I used to be hacking for crack down there by Greyhound bus station. Yeah. <laughs> in my ghetto mobile, hacking for crack. Where you going? Brookhaven, let's go. Langhorn, let's go. <laughs> Moorville, let's go. I used to hack for crack. And my last, in my last attempt at getting hot, I hit somebody's car. Mm. And it, it was to the point that they had to get out, they kept it moving. Thank God for that. And I was in control of my life because God gave us what? Choices. You could get high or stay clean. Or die. So, or die. So I choose to, to live. So I was working at CCT Connect. And I guess what? I didn't go to a program. I did it off the muscle. Control every day. I had to control the old Dirt McKnight who was trying to destroy the new Dirt McKnight. It's like Easter. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of the old you. So the new you can what? Resurrect. But the old us is going to fight the new us that's trying to what? Manifest. All the time. Anybody catch that? So I was hacking for crack, and I had control because every day working for CCT Connect, if I was in the Northeast, I had my meeting book with me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make a meeting right here. Time book, boom. Pick somebody up in North Philadelphia, same thing. South Philly, same thing. And like Katina said, by the time I got home, I was too tired. To do anything. To do anything else. But no. <laughs> <laughs> Being in control. How, who been in? Who thought they was in control, but we was out of control? Shit. Yeah, that's big right there. Yes. So who's controlling our life? Who's driving our lives today? God. Very good. Why you say that, sir? What's your name? Tim. Tim, how you doing? Hi, Tim. Good. I lost God back in the day. Mm -hmm. My sister passed away. My mother and then my father all within like 13 years long. My sister and then my mother four years later and then my father six years later. Okay. But uh I was nuts then, you know. But uh he took him I didn't like God at the time. Mm -hmm. But he took him for a good reason. Mm hmm Anybody hear that? He didn't like God at the time. But he took him for a reason. Uh -huh. And the reason was uh my sister had a brain aneurysm. She had cancer first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh she went in she had something she had headaches, she was getting headaches, she went down to her, she and she ended up passing away from the brain aneurysm. Mm -hmm. My mom, uh, she had heart, or she had uh, breast cancer, mm -hmm. but she beat that, you know. And then uh, she had emphysema, mm -hmm. smoked a lot, you know. And she was in the hospital, and uh, she ended up passing away from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my father, he was in Vietnam for seven and a half years, and. Uh, he ended up passing away from pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. Heard about that. And uh, a good speaker at a meeting told me, and that's what got me better, was God took them for a good reason because mm -hmm. they were suffering. You know? mm -hmm. Are you they, all, they were, all three of them, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I got God back in my life now, you know? And I, what I'm doing now is. I'm having a problem uh, trying to understand is there a difference between not liking yourself and not caring about yourself or having resentment? Towards yourself? Yeah. Are Anybody you, hear that? Are you, that's a question. Are you grieving? Are you still grieving? Yeah. So You're grieving. Take time. Well, that what comes with in grief. And Pardon? that, that, that I, I, comes with in grief. Um, one of the things when you get to the point and you question yourself that, um, have you ever thought about going back to the Bible reading the book of Psalms 20 and 30? I go to church a lot. I go twice a week. I've been doing that mostly all my life. So you know? this personal reading. Pardon? Personal reading. Personal reading. I haven't been doing that. Get along. Read. Read by, by yourself. yourself. Right. Meditate. Yeah. Yeah, when you get to that point. 
Right. That means that mm-hmm. means you're going you're de spirited. Right. You're de spirited. So when you get to that point and you feel like you don't like yourself, when you feel like, um, why did they leave and why am I here by myself? And because I have a lot of people that left me <laughs> and I question God, especially mm. when my son died, because I always say the people yeah. that I love the most, that I really love the most, he took them away from me. All of them did. Right. Yeah, okay. The and nicest people in the world. You know? Yeah, the people uh-huh. that really cared for you, that right. when you were in some deep situations before you hit the bottom, yes, you ma'am. were able to turn to them and they had a solution for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. one of the things I had to learn was um, I was very low in the spirit when I get to that point. Low in the spirit means de-spirited, means that's when um, depression, hurt, pain, and right. anger. Cloud of trauma. Yeah, mm. all of that comes in mm-hmm. when you get to that point. And I was learning, um, reading between the book of um, Psalms 20. I say Psalm 30 because it will lift you up in the areas where you wouldn't be thinking that is you. Or why, you know, why is why all that's happening or why you this way or why they died and stuff like that um when you get to psalms 40 then um everything is released but i do it at least twice out of the week right i used to read it every day i used to read it every day get that down for me psalms 20 the book of psalms 20 to 30 right and if you want to get more to it that whole within that hour or so if you can read it between 20 to 30 to 40 it will answer some of the questions that you ask. Okay. Just today. Right. Okay. And what and what and what um what control means you got what? That means surrendering. Yeah. And when surrender. you surrender, yes, um, surrender. No, um, yeah. Is there a difference between the between the two? Because oh, oh, which one? I went to a rehab uh-huh. a while back before I came here. Yeah. And I had like four years sober. Mm-hmm. And then I relapsed again. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh I went back to when I was a child to find out who the hell I was. You know what I mean? I found it out in dreams, everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Because I forgot a lot about some of my childhood, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, <clears throat> I started caring about myself. I got all my pain, guilt, and shame mm-hmm. out there, you know? I cried a lot and I did all that shit, you know? <laughs> but then I was here three and a half months ago and I went out and my house was robbed and all my father's guns were missing and TVs and stereo and shit. A week later, I relapsed. So I came back here again, you know, three days later. It only lasted three days. I came back, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm wondering, is there is there a difference between those two? What two? Pain, shame, and guilt. Not caring about yourself. Oh, not like hating it, yourself. Yes. You know, or... Having a resentment. Oh, okay. All right. Well, okay. Pain, guilt, and shame. I got rid of that. You got rid of it? Yes, I did. And then when you get rid of that, then you can get rid of the resentments. No. I I, hold on to it. I I didn't even know, but I hung on. Okay. You know what I mean? All right. But but, but, but look. Crawling on my hands and knees, going to my mother's purse, taking five dollars. Uh-huh. Stealing twelve thousand. Wait a minute, hold, hold tight, y'all. Be patient, y'all. We almost done. Come on. Stealing twelve thousand dollars out of my father's safe and never telling him. I'm mm-hmm. sorry that mm-hmm. he never knew about it, mm-hmm. you know? That's uh, grace right there. My car breaking down, my mother renting me a car, and me keeping it, and I was supposed to bring it back in a week, and I brought it back two, two and a half months later, three months, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, Hiding grace. it up in the back, because it was like a nice car, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Driving around town with that, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of pain mm-hmm. I, I gave my family, you know, handed over to them. Mm-hmm. My mother knew I was dealing drugs. I told her everything I was doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I told her I'm dealing cocaine. I'm dealing methamphetamine, you know? Right. I told her when I would go places, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Never knew my father, you know? He was in the service for 28 years, a prison guard for 40, you know? Wow. Never told him nothing. He sounded like Jonah. But, uh, but you know, he did like, like this, man. I stole from my mother and my father. I, I broke in the house and took the camcorder, the microwave, the DVD player, and the that. checkbook, right? <laughs> I did that before, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> I did it, too. I did all of that, right? And then my mother came and looking for me. Remember the TVs with the ass on the back before flash screens? Yeah. Yeah, I was a walk from here, maybe all the way up to, um, where we at? <laughs> we, 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 I walked like three, I went like a thousand yards to the pawn shop. You know what I'm right. saying? But look, pain and guilt was there, right? But and, and right for what I did to them, right, and to what I did to me, 
So I have to forgive me because I put poison in me that brought the worst out of me mm. to do what I did to me right. and to what? To the people I love. Yeah. So when I dealt with the gang, the pain, and I dealt with the shame, and I dealt with the guilt, guess what? I was able to start to forgive me and stop holding resentments towards myself. Mm -hmm. It go hand in hand. It's interconnected. But we can't separate it and take a look at each piece. You know what I'm saying? The guilt, the shame, the pain, the resentments will keep us on the plantation of active addiction. That's How much crazy. time you got clean, brother? Two weeks. Two weeks. Give it to all. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Come on, brother. Come on. How, how, what did you say? Could you repeat that about the poison? To the poison in you? And what, I was slow that? when I said that, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but look, 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 like, like, I, look. Thank. I'm gonna give you an example, I, ladies. I just like the way you. Okay, how's up? All right, ladies. Let me ask you an example, ladies. Who slept with men that you would have never slept with if you were sober? Look around. Look around. <laughs> look around, brother. Look around. <laughs> You see that? <laughs> what the? <laughs> you make up the name like, damn. So we put the poison in us and weaken our morality and our morals and our dignity. And we stoop so low to get more low because we thought we was getting high. We was always getting low. So the poison we put in us really destroyed us. You feel what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying right there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But I said it different. That was a new. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How much time you got clean, brother? Me? Yeah. Uh, 15 days. Hey, all right. A lot of time. A lot of time. Hey, resilient people have a what? Find positive meaning in their what? Dilemmas. Who can no. find positivity in a negative situation? Is that important? Yes. yes. Yeah. Why? Come on, we haven't heard. Why is that important? To find the positive in a negative situation. To see what part I played in it. Very good. Yeah. Very good. good. Very good. Who else? Yeah. Something negative. How do we make something positive out of something negative? You got a, you got a peer member that's negative in here. Everybody there? How can you look past them and see them in pain? They here. Yeah. Stick with a winner. Right, stick with a winner. But if somebody say, just my roommate, or he's somebody, he ain't my roommate, he just stay here with me. But he's all of this, and he's angry, and he attacks staff. He bite the hand that feeds him. He's miserable, he's bitter, and he's trapped, and he don't know how to get out Ooh. of his trap. Anybody hear that? Oh, yeah. And I gotta look past what he's doing and look at the fact that he's a hurting individual. Easy said than done. Never hate the sinner. Hate the sin that's housed mm -hmm. in the sinner. Everybody understand that? Yeah, and that good. spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Everybody hear that? We don't fight in here like we did on the streets. Everybody hear that? Yeah. You don't smack nobody back to Kensington in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or back to Africa or whatever, or Jamaica or Puerto Rico. Keep your hands to yourself. Right. It's, so, it's internal spiritual warfare. That we're fighting. Everybody hear that? Yeah. All right. Who's somebody had a hand up over here? Somebody had a hand up? I'm just saying, like, take the positive out of it. Just like you go to a meeting and you heard one thing good. You just take the good and the rest there. Right. Very good. How much time that clean, brother? Damn, I got a week. Give it to him. All right. <laughs> hey, Dash, I used to get, I didn't like going to NA meetings. You know why, sir? He said something good. Because I said, yeah, they in there selling drugs. They high. At the meeting, they high. Yeah. Dudes, they women sleeping with married men. Now, who slept with married men in here? No you knew they were, and you knew they were married. You want to talk about that? <laughs> How much time you got clean, sis? How much time you got clean? Well, I have 26 years. Right now, I got two days. Give it to all. All right. God bless you. God bless you. So I was to always talk negative, but God said, yo, shut up. Be quiet. It ain't about you. Sit down and listen and find the positive in a yeah. negative situation. Yeah. Because Satan is in church. Satan is in the mass G. Yeah. Satan is definitely here. Because when we committed to getting our lives together, get ready for what? Turbulence. Turbulence. Because the enemy is coming. Hard. You think he's happy about us getting our lives together? No. Sure. He's coming to what? He's working right now in his shop. Right? Trying to come up, concoct some plan to make us go crazy. He's peeking around the corner. Come on. Waiting on you. They keep our minds right here. But we resilient people. We fight this with G-O-D. If you Muslim, the Quran. You um, Christian, Seventh-day Adventist, um, et cetera, et cetera, the word of God. You Jewish, the Torah. You Buddhist, they got a book. To fight. Yes. To fight what? The cloud of trauma. Very good. This is the psych ward and the circus. Midgets, clowns, high wire acts, knot throwers, all up here. Explosions and cannons, 30 midgets. 30 clowns here. The psych ward. Anybody hear that? 
Never come up here what? Yeah. By yourself. Anybody hear that? <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. Popcorns and all of that. <laughs> the psych ward right here. The psych ward. The circus. Hey, how about that? The same style. The same style. Resilient people. What? Had the determination to keep going. No matter what. Who can keep going? When I relapse, I kept it moving. Who got up and just stand up? We clean, we stand up, we clean up. We tell the enemy to shut the hell up. Yeah. And we keep it what? Moving. Everybody understand that? And listen, who worried about what people think of you? That's care. more dangerous than a bag of fentanyl. Let me say care. that again. People in here who are worried what people think of you, that is more dangerous than a bag of fentanyl. Mm -hmm. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Because it's hard to recover because you're looking for what? Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Anybody hear that? And sympathy and empathy. And you want to be grandstanding and all that stuff. Yo, lay for all of that. Let them talk. But let you keep it walking. Anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Stay an eagle amongst the chickens. But fly above the foolishness. Because I was an eagle with the chickens for years. Because I was afraid to what? Fly. 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 Anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Afraid to fly. So I could never keep it moving. And I was never resilient. I was always a what? A mess. <laughs> Number eight, <laughs> resilient people, <laughs> less likely to be what influenced by what others think of them. Anybody hear that? Who, uh, 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 um, your mother say, well, you, somebody say, my, you're a deadbeat mom. You believe that? You're a dummy. You're a dummy. You believe that? We stupid. You believe that? You're going to die junkie. Believe that? You ain't gonna never have nobody. You believe that? You ain't never gonna get married. Do you believe that? You're gonna never be nothing. That's right. Do you believe that? Who look in that mirror and see positive self affirmation attached to what you see? Thank God for my mother. My mama saw, uh, she listen, she looked past the crackhead. She saw a king. Inside of me. Inside of a crackhead. Yeah, you ever hear that? Never so never she never been talked been. to the junkie. She talked to the, tr the trap king. Inside of the crackhead. Anybody hear that? So when you look in that mirror, positive self-affirmations, we ask this one woman, tell us something bad about you. She said, I'm a liar. I'm a dope fiend. I tricked. I spit on poles. I, I've been in jail. I shot dope. I smoke coke. I she just gave us a list from A to Z. Tell us something good about you. Your character assets. Uh, 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 call somebody else. So she had a long list of what's bad about her, but nothing good to say good about her. Anybody hear that? And even if it means you got one or two things about you that you know for sure that's you, keep talking about that. Because right, two yeah. will turn to three, and three will turn to four, and four will turn to ten, and ten will turn to twenty. Positive self-affirmations that you can start telling yourself so you can be resilient when we start reminiscing on that what dilemma and that pain. Next one right here, resilience. Have what? Have healthy coping mechanisms. Who have healthy coping mechanisms? That's important. That's important. Listen, this is a launching pad to what? Independence. Play in here, thou there. How we practice is how we play. Who pull fire alarms and run for cover? You in here? Who sit on toilets and leave a forensic ass print on the toilet? You in here? Who eat in the cafeteria and leave a mess on the table like you got maids in here? Like you are, listen, like you, you are the prince of what? London. Mm. Or somebody like that in here. Are you in here? Who here gossip always got another person's name on your lips in somebody else's ears? You in here? Anybody hear that? Who got intrusive memories? And got, look, they get paid tomorrow, but your mouth is shut. You feel like shooting dope and smoking coke and getting drunk, but your mouth is shut. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's real. So I got to learn to speak up. Mind my business, right? And pray. No, no. Here we go right here. Couple mechanisms. Number one, prayer. Y'all pray? How you feel when you pray? Yes. Very good. How about patience? Who working on patience? Is that important? Yeah. Who likes Chick-fil-A? <laughs> I don't like waiting to eat that Chick-fil-A. Who been locked up in here? You know about patience. Forced to be patient. Anybody? Who been a pen out at the 10 o'clock? <laughs> you know about patience. Anybody know? <laughs> Who like to go fishing? I love fishing. Yes, but you got to wait for the fish to get on the hook. Yes, Anybody hear that? Farmers, they cut the earth and throw seeds in the earth and patiently wait for they what? They harvest. A comedian can tell a beautiful joke, but if he had no patience to tell a joke, he killed the joke. Patience is very important. Lose patience, become an impatient. Patience is what parents need when they find out their child is ADHD. Who here lack patience or you smoke cigarettes in your room? Uh-oh. 
Is that you, Tim? Get them cigarette butts up the top. <laughs> Give up the tapes, Richard Nixon. <laughs> Yeah, all right, Tim. All right, it's good. No, a janitor at Kirk Bride said this yesterday. She said she cleaned up the one lady room at Kirk Bride on the women's unit, and on her mattress, when she put the, to clean the sheets, change the sheets, right. it was 10 cigarette put out holes on her mattress. Wow. Oh. Ashtray. Anybody hear that? Yeah, that's and you know what happened is? They take their meds, oh. then they smoke, then they fall asleep. Not out. And it could be a fire. Everybody hear that? Kill yourself too. So you smoking in here, be careful. Thank God for the people who are honest. Because a lot of people are lying in here. And they do smoking. Y'all got y'all bribe. Who, who bribe? Who got shut up money in your pocket? Don't say nothing. Here's $20. <laughs> Yo, give me a call too. <laughs> yeah, that's my, Listen, we've been an A program. We ain't no cops up here. We recovered addicts. We did what you did. Not everything. We, we did a lot of damage. I did worse. But it always got me high. Anybody hear that? Come, who know about a dam? A dam holds water. Is that true? Mm -hmm. But when you see the cracks in the dam, the dam starts to weaken. More cracks, it weakens the dam. More cracks, it weakens the dam. Crack, one more crack, it what? Collapse the dam. And here comes what? The water. The flood. The flood. <laughs> now, what's the, <laughs> now what's the cracks in our recovery? Anybody hear that? Sneaking. What's the cracks in our recovery? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we got to watch that. We got to watch that. A, are selective in who they choose to follow other resilient people. Anybody hear that? Wait, what's up with that, Rob? We got, we got, um, Dad, you got watch five you, minutes. Watching you angry. Why is that important? It is. Uh -huh. Because being around a certain person, and you're a certain energy, and you get caught up in it. You want to go to things they do. You ever say, I never do that. Mm -hmm. That's you know you're doing the same thing and not worse. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm gonna say choose your friends wisely. Uh -huh. right. Watch who you walk with. That's right. So everybody got your best interest at hand. Anybody hear that? Mm -hmm. My man Samuel Jackson was 30 days clean when he did Jungle Fever. Guess what? He been in over 109 movies. This is an ex junkie. My man Luther Vandross got booed at the Apollo. We know Luther, but who beat Luther? Anybody catch that? J.K. Rollins was in a delay train in Manchester on the way to what? London. Pull out her manuscript to write Harry Potter. Thirteen publishers told her, no way. Look at her today. A single mother on welfare. On the edge of what? Self-destruction. What's wrong? We all right? Yeah, you cool. Everybody know what I'm talking about? So get with people who, been, who lived that life. Who were what? Went down and got up. Hold on to them. Ask them questions. Will Smith in the pursuit of happiness. He asked that man two things. What do you do and how do you do it? Mm. Networking is very important. Anybody hear that? Yeah. Find what you need to get to the, to the place you want to be. Last one for resilient people. Believe in the higher power and have the strong sense of purpose. It will give you a sense of purpose. Yes. Why you say that? About prayer. Yes. About God. Uh-huh. It opens your eyes. Anybody hear that? Give you insight. Uh-huh. Give you wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is knowing what to do, when to do, and how to do it. Let's say this. Right. Very good. Right. Judy Garland, the Wizard of Oz. The real Judy Garland behind the scenes, she took pills to go to sleep, took pills to what? To wake up and perform. And she wound up ODing. Off a of pill. Right. In the movie, everything they was after. Remember the Wiz? Let's go with Michael Jackson. You remember that one? Michael Jackson and whatever, we the Wizard of Oz or the Wiz, whatever, right? Michael Jackson said he was a scarecrow. He said, I wish I had a brain. But he was com 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 confessing, he was, he was plagiarizing, what? Confucius, Plato, Socrates, and gave us some of his own wisdom. The lion said he wished he had courage. <laughs> but he was whipping ass from under the ground, above the ground. Anybody hear that? Anybody in sight, he was dealing with them. The tin man said he wished he had a heart, but he loved everybody until he got to the wizard. Dorothy was already home. All she had to do was what? Wake up. Mm. And it ran, it ran through the poppy field. That was Kensington. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when they got to the wizard, they found out it was Richard Pryor. And the Wizard of Oz was that old white man. Somebody that can whip ass anybody. Everybody hear that? So I said that to say this. Everything we need to be resilient is in us. Anybody hear that? Yes, sir. Underneath the pain, underneath PSDs, underneath the death, underneath childhood atrocities, underneath the abuse, underneath mental illness, underneath the abandonment, underneath rejection. Diamonds. 
is produced when it has pressure, then you see diamonds. Mm. Or it busts pipes. Bring the worst out of you. It brings the worst out of you. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Thank God for pressure. Pain impregnates our purpose, which give birth to power. Mm. We'll never know how much power that's living in us if we always running from pain. Well, how strong we are. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Good group. How y'all feel? Good. 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 Y'all feel resilient? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Listen, next week, new topic, same passion. Who woke us up? Yeah. God. Grant us serenity to accept the things we cannot change. The courage to change the things we can. And the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not ours, be done. Amen. All right, y'all. God bless you. Amen. All right. Tim. Amen.